What's up? My name's Tech Numbo here for Troubleshoot and welcome to this incredibly exciting video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to optimize your FPS for the best possible experience inside of Cyberpunk 2077. As usual with these videos, they'll be split into two parts. The first part is Windows optimization and the second part is game optimization. Timestamps and the rest will be found in the description down below. So to begin, number one, make sure Windows is up to date and your graphics card drivers, most importantly, are up to date as it's a brand new game. Keep your eyes open in the next few days as there'll probably be a couple more NVIDIA updates AMD updates, etc, etc, while this game is being played on more and more computers. Number two, something that a lot of people have issues with is game mode on Windows 10. Usually, disabling it gives you better performance. Simply hit start, type in game mode, and open up game mode settings. Then when the game mode window opens up, simply make sure that it's toggled to off. Next up, some other things that can cause issues is the capture section over here, especially if you're using something like Nvidia Shadowplay. Simply set this to off unless you explicitly use this feature. So off here, off here, and that's about it. Then the Xbox game bar, once again, can cause some performance issues. Turn this off unless you're explicitly using it. It's simply just one slider. Once you're done with that, close out of this window, press start, and then type in GPU. We'll be opening up graphic settings, and we'll be looking for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling at the very top. By enabling this, usually you get some better performance, but on some computers it can cause some instability. I for one experienced instability inside of Call of Duty Cold War while this was on, and as soon as I turned it off, the instability was solved. Having this on should give you better FPS, but if you experience more crashes, try toggling this off and playing the game once again. Then, while we're still on the same page, simply scroll down and look for graphics performance preference. This is incredibly important if you're on a gaming laptop. Simply click Browse if you don't already see Cyberpunk on this list, and make sure you have desktop apps selected in this dropdown. Then we'll be navigating across to where the game is actually installed. For me, it's in eGames Steam Steam Apps, common Cyberpunk 2077, but for you it'll probably be in C Program Files 86, Steam, etc, etc. When inside of here, open up the bin folder up here, x64, and then double click on cyberpunk2077.exe. Then when it pops up on this list, click options, and then make sure to choose high performance, and then click save. This makes sure that it works on our high performance GPU, which is incredibly important if you have an integrated GPU inside of your computer. Next up, let's quickly run through some NVIDIA settings if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. If you don't, then simply skip across to the next timestamp in the description down below or on the play bar right under this video. Simply right click on your desktop, NVIDIA control panel, and then inside of here, make sure that inside of the adjust image settings with preview tab, you have it set to use the advanced 3D image settings. Then head across to manage 3D settings and change to the program settings tab at the very top. When this page loads, we'll make sure to select Cyberpunk 2077 from this drop down over here. But if you don't see it, Simply click add to the right hand side of the list and then select Cyberpunk 2077 if you've recently launched it. Otherwise, click browse, navigate to the same place we did before and double click on the actual EXE. Then simply click add selected program and make sure it's selected on this list. Inside of here, we'll be quickly running through some of these options. Let me set them myself and then go ahead and pause the video in a couple of seconds while I'm scrolling down. Simply make sure to copy all of the settings that you can. You may have more or less than me. I do have a 1080 Ti inside of my PC and a G-Sync display for an example. So simply copy what you can as I'm scrolling down. Here's the first section, the second section, and the last section down here. Then simply click apply and we can close out of the NVIDIA control panel. Next up, we'll be clearing up clutter on our PC. Simply hit start and type in clean. We'll be opening up disk cleanup. Inside of here, make sure you have C drive selected, the one with Windows, then hit OK. Then when this window pops up, simply check everything on this list. Otherwise, if you'd like to keep something like your recycle bin, simply make sure to uncheck it and then click OK to clear all of these folders. Then click delete files and we'll wait for this to finish. You'll know it's done when this little window vanishes. Then, if you have the game installed on a different hard disk other than the one with Windows, simply open it up once again and then select it from the drop down here. Then follow through the exact same steps, OK, delete files, and wait for it to finish. After it's done, we'll simply be adding and enabling the ultimate power mode scheme on your PC. Simply hit start, type in power, and open up the choose a power plan section. Inside of here, 
will have a whole bunch of power plans listed, and if you don't see the ultimate performance option, then simply copy the text from the description down below, hit start, type in CMD, and then click run as administrator. Then paste the command in here and hit enter. Upon doing this and reopening the power config screen over here, we should see the ultimate performance plan. Simply select it and then close out of it. It'll give us a slight boost in performance. Next up, let's simply jump into the game to customize in-game options as there's not much else we have to do. Then when the game finally starts up, head into the settings window. Then at the very top, select graphics. We'll be starting here. You can select a quick preset that matches the settings on your computer. If you have a really recent graphics card that's very powerful and a good CPU, you can have this on the higher end. If you know you have a worse PC, set this to the lower end. And of course, the same applies to texture quality. Texture quality will use quite a bit of VRAM, so if you have lots of VRAM available on your graphics card, you can have this on the high end. Otherwise, set it down to the lower end. Under the basic section, we have some options here that are more for gameplay. The only one that really affects your FPS will be field of view and motion blur. The higher your field of view, the more you'll be able to see, but also the more needs to be rendered in per frame, meaning you'll have lower FPS the higher this is. Of course, this is completely user preference. I like playing somewhere around 90 to 100. Film grain, I like to have off. Chromatic aberration, depth of field, I like to have off. Film grain, chromatic aberration, depth of field, lens flare, and motion blur are all up to you. I personally don't like motion blur that much, so I'll have it off and depth of field makes me seem like I need to put on glasses, so I'll have both of these off as such. Scrolling down, we have the advanced section. Here's where things get really in depth. Contact shadows and improved facial lighting geometry can cost a little bit of performance, but I can't see them being that much. This option at the very top here, contact shadows, doesn't involve ray tracing, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue to have on. Ray tracing can slow down computers quite a bit. Having contact shadows off as well should give you a few more FPS, but having them on will give you a slightly better lighting experience in the game. Local shadow mesh quality, local shadow quality, cascaded shadows range, and cascaded shadows resolution, as well as distant shadows resolution, all have to do with shadows. In real life, shadows are blurry and not always something that you focus on. The same should apply in game. The higher these options are, the crispier and better looking shadows will be, but of course they'll come at an extreme FPS and performance cost, as this is usually something that's very costly. Having this set too high will result in quite a good gameplay experience, but the lower that you have all of these settings here, the more FPS you should expect in game. These are all really up to you. I would recommend lowering the shadow quality to somewhere around medium or low, Local shadow mesh quality to about medium. Cascaded shadows range, medium. Cascaded shadows resolution to low. This will result in more blocky shadows, but I would assume this has the most impact, as well as distant shadows resolution. Having this set to low will result in lower quality distant shadows, but of course you're not really going to be focusing on them as much as you are on the closer shadows. Volumetric fog resolution and volumetric cloud quality, of course, have to do with fog and these gassy type materials in the game. Having these set to higher options will probably result in light scattering and things alike, which can cost quite a bit of FPS. Having these set to lower options once again will result in better FPS. Scrolling down, we have max dynamic decals. I would assume having this at higher doesn't really have that much of an impact unless you're on a really low end PC. They say the amount of simultaneously eliminated dynamic decals, but I would assume that these would be something like bullet holes and things alike. Having this set to a higher option shouldn't really matter too much, but once again, dropping this down should result in better FPS. Screen space reflections quality and subsurface scattering quality both have to do with lighting. Screen space reflections quality determines the quality of reflections in game. Higher quality corresponds to improved image detail and smoothness. But of course, the higher this is, the more FPS you'll be losing. Having this set to medium or high will result in a really good looking game that wouldn't cost too much FPS. Of course, they do have the higher options for really good computers. Subsurface scattering only really has to do with human skin. 
I would assume that this also only comes into play when people are close enough to you to be rendered in with good quality. So if you're experiencing FPS drops while really close to other people, you may want to drop this setting. I'll leave it on medium for now. Ambient occlusion, our screen space ambient occlusion, shadows in areas where regular shadow maps lack precision and incoming light is blocked by nearby environmental geometry. Settings on higher quality presets will increase sampling rate and improve ambient occlusion, but use more GPU power. Of course, this is something to expect with ambient occlusion. Having this set to a lower option shouldn't really impact the visual gameplay too much. Color precision, I'd like to have set to high as having it set to a lower option may result in color banding, which is really weird when you're playing the game. I wouldn't like to have color banding at all while playing. Keep the set too high. Mirror quality, of course, determines the quality of mirrors in game, and you should probably have this around medium unless you have a really good PC. Level of detail should be left at high to keep things loaded at a high level of detail, of course. The lower this is, the more objects will pop in as you get close to them. Then next up, we have ray tracing. I only have a 10 series GPU, so this is forced off. But of course, if you have a 20 or 30 series GPU, you can turn this on. However, when you do, you will expect a huge drop in FPS as ray tracing will lower your FPS dramatically. If you'd like a more cinematic experience with minimal difference, you can enable it, but having it set to off will result in a much better gameplay and FPS experience. The same goes for DLSS, but in the reverse. If you have a 20 or 30 series NVIDIA graphics card, you can enable this. It renders the game at a lower resolution and then scales it up using fancy AI. The higher this is, the more FPS you'll be getting in game as the game will really be rendered in a much smaller window and then blown up using AI. But of course, the higher the setting is, the more blurry everything will get and the more visual artifacts you'll notice. If you would like a huge boost in FPS, this is a great place to get it if you have a 20 or 30 series graphics card, but of course the higher you go, the more blurry it looks. I'd recommend keeping this option to the lower end unless you really need extra FPS. Dynamic Fidelity FX CAS and Static Fidelity FX CAS, both of these should help you maintain a higher FPS, but I would assume they come at a dramatic cost of visual quality in game. Even though these are AMD Fidelity FX options, you can enable them on an NVIDIA graphics card. You can choose between static or dynamic. If you enable static Fidelity, you can choose a resolution scale. If you lower this, the game will be rendered at a much lower quality and result in a blurrier experience. I'd recommend always having it set to 100 if you choose to enable either of these options. Dynamic Fidelity will basically drop the resolution that the game's running at when you're starting to lose FPS below this target over here. Setting the minimum to a lower setting will result in a much blurrier game when you're losing FPS and you're below this point. You can of course set a maximum if you'd like to limit how much the resolution can go up to if you know you won't be reaching good FPS. I'd recommend keeping these both off if you'd like a more crispy gameplay experience. Now that we've finished going through the graphics tab, you don't need to click apply anywhere, it applies for you. You can of course go through the gamma correction on the right hand side if you'd like to adjust how the game looks on your monitor. The lower the gamma setting, the more you'll be able to see, just make sure that this looks good on your monitor. Next up, we have the video section at the very top. Inside of here, we have a couple of important options. Maximum FPS should be set to off and VSync as well, unless you're experiencing screen tearing. If you have a G-Sync or anything like that monitor, you should really have these set to off. If you have a normal monitor and you're getting good FPS without screen tearing, you should also have these off as enabling them will result in more input latency, which is not a good experience for anyone. So keep both VSync and maximum FPS off. Monitor, of course, is what monitor you'll be playing the game on. Zero is usually the one that you'd keep it on if you have a single monitor setup. Otherwise, you can push it across between your screens using A and D or clicking to the sides here. The one that really makes a difference here will be windowed mode and resolution. Resolution should always match the resolution of your display. If you need to render at a lower resolution, use the option at the very bottom here, dynamic or static Fidelity FX CAS. So making sure that this matches your actual monitor, the next option up here, windowed mode, should always be set to full screen for the best FPS and input latency that you could possibly have. HDR mode will be set to none unless you have an HDR monitor, in which case you'll have a couple more options here. Now that we've gone through all of those graphics and video settings, there's not much else we need to change here. I of course have basically created myself a medium template for a medium to high end PC that you'd like to get lots of FPS on. Of course, just like customizing your character, 
Customizing your in-game graphics options and the rest are something that you're going to have to spend time on doing. If you're playing the game as such and you'd like to see an FPS counter, if you're using Steam, you can simply hit Shift Tab to bring up the in-game menu over here. Hitting Settings at the very bottom, followed by In-game at the very top, we can enable the in-game FPS counter in one of the corners of our screen and I'd recommend enabling high contrast color to make it green. This way, we can see our FPS in the top left in a really unintrusive way. As you can see, recording this and playing on a 1080 Ti with basically medium settings results in about 40 FPS or 30 FPS, which isn't a really good experience at all. I'll probably have to drop the settings even further. And of course, we're still just really inside of one building. So simply just apply the settings that I went through earlier and be a bit more harsh as you're doing it. Maybe instead of dropping everything to medium, drop it to low instead. Of course, if you'd like to experiment with what exactly would be good, you can use the quick preset at the very top. But again, I would recommend changing the basic options here to match your personal liking, dropping anisotropic filtering over here, and of course, messing around with shadows as these are a big performance cost on a computer. Of course, if you have DLSS, I'd recommend turning that on at least to a very low setting if you'd like many more FPS. Besides that, I'm going to go ahead and continue customizing my settings and playing my game. Thank you for watching. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.